Let's go over quadratic functions lesson number six using a quadratic function to model a situation. We've learned three different forms of the quadratic function and each has their advantages. Uh, for example, general form would be nice to find the y-intercept because if you let x equal zero, you can see that the y-intercept would be zero c. The factored form is useful if you know the x-intercepts of the graph and then you can determine the equation that way. Uh, m and n being the x-intercepts or the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts of the graph. And the standard form or what we call the vertex form is useful because we can read the vertex right from the equation. Let's take a look at class example one. We have the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, one of the most internationally recognized bridges in the world, built in 1937, and it's cool. And so we have this picture where we have the left tower is this high and there's a parabolic cable that runs down almost touching the road and then back up to the right tower. We also have the water at the bottom here. Now in the diagram above, the road across the bridge is 246 feet above the water level and the two towers are 746 feet above the water level with the two towers being 4,200 feet apart and the lowest point of the parabolic cable is 10 feet above the road. So we can make a diagram here and say, okay, well, this is, uh, this little distance is 10 feet, okay? And all the way across, this is going to be 4,200 feet across and all the way from the top of the tower all the way down to the water, that's 746, and from the water to the road, here, this is gonna be 246. Now, Cartesian plane is superimposed on the diagram here, so this diagram is just repeated, but now we have a y-axis and an x-axis that are superimposed here. So here you can see this is a zero standing for the origin of the zero, zero, zero x and zero y, and it goes all the way across here. You can see that the top of the right tower is still on the x-axis right here. So let's see what, what these values mean then. 746 all the way from the water to the tower means that if we use zero for the top of the tower, this point here at the bottom where the water is, is actually at zero negative 746. It's 746 feet down from this one. Well, if the road is 246 feet from the water like so, then that means we can see the road here is actually 500. If you think about 746 minus 246, that's equal to 500. So we can see this distance here from zero to the road, this is negative 500. If then the distance from the cable to the road is 10, which is just 10 above the road, if the road is negative 500 feet from the top of the tower, then adding this 10 will make this right here, this point, the smallest or minimum point of the cable is going to be at negative 490 as a height. Where's the X value for this? Well, let's take a look at the top of the tower. The top of the tower here is zero, zero. And if the bridge is 400, not 420, 4,200 feet, uh, if these two towers are 4,200 feet apart, and that means if this is zero, then this point here can be represented as 4,200, and then also the height of zero, so the exact same height as the top of the left tower, which means that this point being the minimum, the x-coordinate of that point is going to be in, in the exact middle between the two x-intercepts. So if we take zero and add 4,200, and then divide by two, we would get 20, uh, sorry, 4,200 divided by two, and that's equal to 2,100. So that means that this coordinate, x coordinate here is 2,100, and this determines then the coordinates of the bottom or the minimum point of the cable. Well, we know that the minimum point of the cable corresponds to uh, what a vertex is. So the vertex is the minimum if, it, if the graph is going to have a minimum, then the minimum is going to be that vert vertex point. So we have the coordinates of the top of each tower. So the left tower is zero, zero. The right tower is 4,200, zero. So, and the vertex is right in the middle of zero and 4,200. So that's 2,100 as the X coordinate and negative 490 as the y-coordinate. 
Okay, the equation of the function representing the parabola can be written in this form of y equals a times x minus m in brackets, and then multiplied by x minus n in brackets. Let's see if we can use points that we see in the picture to determine values for a, m, and n, and then show that it's this equation, y equals one over 9,000, x squared minus seven over 15x. So let's write the general equation here, y is equal to a times x minus m, and x minus n. Now remember that m and n are both x coordinates of x intercepts. So if we take a look at the picture again, we can see that this is the x coordinate for one x intercept, and this is the co x coordinate for the other x intercept. So if we say that m is equal to zero and n is equal to 4200, we can actually substitute those values into this equation. So y is equal to a, x minus zero, and then x minus 4,200. We can see then, we can simplify y is equal to a, x, and then x minus 4,200. Now we're almost done. The only thing that we need then is we, we need to find out what this a value is so that we can complete the equation. So how can we find out the a value? Well, one is to use a, a point, right? Remember that if we're using a point, then that point, which has an x and a y coordinate, we can use the x value in for x and the y value in for y and then determine what a is. Now we have a choice, right? Here we have the x-intercept of 0, 0, the x-intercept of 4,200, 0. And what can we use here? If we use 0 for x, then that would multiply by a, and therefore a would disappear, and we wouldn't be able to find out what a is. Similarly, if we used 4,200 for this, we'd have 4,200 minus 4,200 in the second bracket, and again, we'd have the zero product, and the a would disappear. So using the x-intercepts is not useful for helping to find a in this form. So we have to use another point. What other point do we know? Well, we know this point. This minimum point has the x coordinate as 2100 and the y coordinate as negative 490. So that means that if we use 2100 for x and then use negative 490 in for y, so this is gonna be this x, this one's gonna be this x, and this negative 490 could be this y, we can find out and solve for a. So let's see if we can do that. So we have y is equal to, oops, we said that y was negative 490. So let's erase that. We have negative 490 is our y. This is going to be equal to a, which we don't know. And then we have x, which we said was 2100. And then also 2100 for x. And then that's going to be subtracting 4200. Okay, so we have a bit of um, multiplication to do. This is going to be 2100. And then 2100 minus 4200 is negative 2100. That's equal to negative 490. And let's see. So this is going to be a uh, 2100 times 2100. Let's see what we have here. So we have 2100 times negative 2100. And this is going to be this negative 441 with four zeros on it. So we have negative 441 with four zeros. And then again, this is negative 490. So to solve for a, we divide both sides by this negative 41 with four zeros underneath. So we have negative 490 all over negative 4410000. And we can do that actually in our calculator. So we say this, uh, we'll say negative 490 divided by our answer. And we get this 1.1 times 10 to the negative four. Uh, but if we press math and fraction is our very first option, so we press enter, enter, we can see that this is equal to one over 9,000, which means then we have a value for A, we have the values for M and N, we can now um, use that to try and find it equal to this. So we have Y is equal to one over 9,000, and then this is gonna be X, and then this is gonna be X minus, 4,200. So it's not quite like this yet, but I think we can just multiply the x through and see what happens. We have negative 1 over 9,000 
is equal to x times x, so that's x squared. And then we have to find out what 4,200 divided by 9,000 is. So let's just do that. 4,200 divided by 9,000. And we find out that is 0 0.46, but we can probably make that into a fraction. We press enter, and that is our 7 over 15 that we are looking for. So this is 7 over 15 x. Okay, so this is the equation. We've shown that it equals this equation that we see here, and we are done. So taking a look at C, let's find a suitable window so we can use actually use our graphing calculator to show the, the whole bridge with the vertex. Okay, so uh, let's just do a zoom six for a standard just to see what it looks like. Uh, y equals, oh, we already have it here. Uh, one over 9,000 x squared minus seven over 15 x. All right, uh, when we graph it, it doesn't look great but we know that the width is going to be 4,200. So I think the best thing to do is make, make sure that we're a little bit past zero so we can see it. So maybe we'll say negative 200 and the X maximum we'll say um, maybe 4,500 because it's gotta be at least 4,200. X scale, let's go by 500s and the Y minimum. Hmm, remember that the road is at negative 500 and the water is at negative seven. 46 or something. So uh, if we just said negative 700 maybe, and the maximum, um, just to make things kind of the same, so that it's in the middle, we'll say this is 700, and we'll use a scale of maybe 100. That might work. Okay, let's graph it and see. Ah, this is very nice. This is that cable that we see. It looks like a parabola, and we can see the bottom of it. Okay. So we have, uh, what do we say? We said the X minimum had to be, I think we said negative 200. The X max was equal to 4,500. And then we use a scale, I think, of just one, 500, I believe. And then the Y minimum, we said uh, use negative 700. The Y max was, we had to be at least zero. So I think we said 700 though, just to make it kind of in the middle. And the scale was equal to, I think we used 100. Okay, what is the height of the cable above the road 900 feet from the left tower? So remember, this is the equation one over 9,000, oops, x squared minus seven over 15, oops, 15 x. So that means if we let x equal 900. Remember it's 900 from the left tower and the left tower has an X coordinate of zero. So if you let X equal to 900 in this formula, then we should get one over 9,000, this 900 squared minus seven over 15 times 900. Let's see what that is in our calculator. So here we could say, if we just quit out of here, um, well, what do we say? It was one over 9,000, one divided by 9,000 times 900 squared, and then minus seven divided by 15, and then times by 900. And we get negative 330. So this is equal to negative 330. So that's going to be the Y coordinate. We can also do it in a graph and calculator way. So here with the graph calculator, we have our graph we can actually press second trace and then just use the value. We can say, we want the X value to be 900 and it will show us what the Y value is when we press enter. So this is 900 to the right and the Y value is negative 330, which corresponds. Now this is the Y value, but we're asked to find the height above the road. So if I can just draw you a crude picture, this goes above the road, here is the road and there is a space in between here, right? This spot here is negative 500. And we want the difference between where negative 330 is. So negative 330, if we subtract this negative 500, then we will get, uh, what do we say? Negative 330 minus negative 500. And we will get the height, which is here. Let's just do this in our calculator a second quit. We have negative 330 minus negative 500. And 
we get 170. So this is going to be 170 feet, which is the height above the road. Okay, the equation of the parabola can also be written in standard form. Y equals A in brackets X minus H all squared plus K. Let's see if we can write the equation of the parabola in this form. Well, if we're looking to write the equation in the vertex form, then it would probably be helpful to know what the vertex is. Now, this HK is the vertex, but we can see that in the question we have 2100 as the X coordinate of the vertex and negative 490 as the K value. So let's try Y is equal to AX minus H squared plus K. And we have Y then is equal to, remember A, the A value we found was one over 9,000. And then we have X minus the X coordinate of the vertex, which is 2100. That's gonna be squared and then plus the K value. But since it's negative, it's just written as negative 490. Here is the equation in vertex form. Okay, let's uh, take a look at class example number two and talk about the cross section of a satellite dish. Um, it's par parabolic. So that means that this shape of the dish here, the, and the edge of the shape is, uh, looks like a parabola. And therefore there's a quadratic function that we can use to define this curve right here. So Cartesian plane is superimposed. You can see it right here is that zero, zero is that dot right right there, so that's zero, zero. And let's use, since it is right here in the middle, this origin is at the vertex, it says. So that means the vertex for this quadratic function is at zero, zero. Now remember the vertex in the vertex or form or the standard form means that that is the value of hk. So that means that h is equal to zero, and that k is equal to zero. All right, so let's write the formula. So we have y is equal to a bracket x minus h squared plus k. And then since h is zero and k is zero, we can say that y is equal to a x minus zero squared plus zero and simplify into y is equal to a with just an x that's squared and added nothing. So I guess we can take this bracket off. This is y equals ax squared. This is the, the equation to work with now. It doesn't quite look like the vertex uh, form, but it just is the simplified version because h is equal to zero and k is equal to zero. All right, this is the, the equation, but we're missing a value for what a is. So we don't actually know the equation yet. So to find a, how do we find a? Well, remember that uh, one familiar method of finding A is to use a point that the curve goes through, and then we can put that X into the X um, in the equation, and then replace Y with the value for Y in the equation. And hopefully the A value will be the only variable left to solve for. Okay, is there a point that it goes through? Well, in the vertex form, we can't use the vertex point because then it would zero out the A and it wouldn't be useful for us to find or solve for A that way. So we need another point. So I think there's some information in the question that you can see from the picture here. This is zero, zero, but it goes eight centimeters all the way up because this is in the middle, this is the vertex. And we have uh, the, this 14 that goes over and then it says six over here. So what does that mean? If this is zero, zero, as it goes along this curve, that means it's going, it's decreasing this height. How much did it decrease by? Well, normally here, this is the height of eight. And then at this point on the curve, the height uh, up to this point is six. So what is the difference between eight and six? Right here, this distance is equal to two. And you can see that this two plus the six makes that eight. And it occurs 14 centimeters from this origin. So that means this point here can be thought of as the point 14 over from the origin and then two above the origin, right? If you were at the origin, it, it had a depth of eight and now it has a depth of only six, which is a difference of two. 
So we can use then this 14 as the x value, and we can use two as the y value. So in this form, formula of y equals ax squared, we can use x as 14, so this is 14 squared. And as our y value, we can use a different, this two as our y value, so this is equal to two. Okay, let's see if we can solve then. This is two and, oh, we have to have the a there. So this is y equals ax squared, so y is two. A we don't know yet, but x is equal to 14. So two is equal to a, and what is 14 squared? Let's use our calculator, 14 squared is equal to 196. So this is times 196. And the familiar of dividing both sides by this coefficient here. So a is equal to two divided by 196. And 196 is even, so a is equal to one over 98. All right, now that we know what a is, we can say that with confidence that the equation for this quadratic curve is equal, y is equal to a being one over 98, and then it's x squared. Okay, if that's the case, then um, that's the equation, which is good. We're supposed to find, yes, determine the width of the dish to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So what is the width of the dish? This zero, zero is in the exact center, and if this is gonna be the minimum point, and it says that the maximum depth is equal to eight centimeters. And that means then we can keep on going all the way to the end here and find out that this will also have a height of eight. So this has a height of eight because that's the maximum, right? For this being zero, if we continue, this is, this is zero, this would be eight. We don't know what the X value that causes that to be eight. And on this side, since we know that this is the vertex, it's gonna have some symmetry going the other way as well and saying this is gonna be an X, um, not the same X, I guess this is a negative X with eight. Because this is the middle, then it's going to be the same distance at the same height. All right, so let's see if we can find that. Since this, if we imagine this green line as a Y equals eight, then really what we wanna do is we wanna say, uh, this green line of y being eight is going to be equal to the curved line of y equals a x squared. And so let's say that okay, y is equal to eight, but we also want it to equal the one over 98 x squared. So then that means this is our equation here, and we can solve eight is equal to one over 98 times x squared. And let's multiply both sides by 98, we get uh, x squared is equal to 98 times eight. So 98 times eight is 784. And to solve uh, x squared equals 784, we'll take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 784. And we find out that x is equal to, let's see, the square root of 784 we get 28. So x can be plus or minus 28. And we see then that this is going to be 28. This is going to be negative 28. And so if this is the middle, we have 28 this way, 28 that way. We get, oh, we can also say 28 minus, I guess 28 minus negative 28 is equal to 56. And so we could say the, the width is equal to 56 centimeters exactly. Oh, to the nearest tenth, we have to say 56.0 centimeters. Okay, you're ready for your assignment and I will see you in class.